What's up everyone? I am Josh. Welcome to my channel. Brand new YouTube channel, Thrill Pack Sports Cards. I'm going to be doing a little unveiling of this Fairfield football box. I'll do a Fairfield challenge here today. So just uh, been getting back into collecting sports cards. I used to really be into it uh, when I was a kid, 10, probably 10 through 13. I think the very first pack of cards I bought, I was at the corner store, which is what we call it in Michigan, a uh, party store. It was, I believe it was a pack of 1989 Tops football. And so I thought it would be appropriate to kick things off here on the channel with <clears throat> breaking some football cards. So was at Target the other day and had some leftover gift cards and noticed that they had three Oh, by the way, I've just recently been getting back into collecting thanks to the Jabs Family channel. So shout out to the Jabs Family on YouTube. Uh, I believe his name is Eric. Guy's really awesome. Check out his channel. Anyway, he kind of got me back into it. We're about the same age. We co started collecting around the same time. Uh, he's out in Pittsburgh and I'm out on the West Coast. And so anyway, I was at Target and saw these boxes and I had heard Eric talking about how people do the Fairfield challenge where they get these Fairfield boxes. They've actually been around since I believe the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, on one of his videos, he actually found a old Fairfield uh, repackaged. These are repackaged packs. He found one at a flea market. I think it was from like 2000. So they've been around for a long time, but people have been doing these. Uh, so apparent, I haven't broke one of these yet, but apparently there's various packs in here from different years. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Fairfield challenge is to open some boxes up, open some packs up and try to make the best team you can out of it. So uh, fortunately they only had three boxes, but I got all three of them. So I got all the boxes at Target. Uh, I bought all the Fairfield boxes at Target, really uh, uh, simplifies to just three. But uh, let's break these open and uh, see what we find. And I'm hoping to reconnect with some of you guys through these videos that I do. I'll be doing uh, all kinds of videos, not just breaking, but uh, hopefully show you some of the stuff that I've gotten from estate sales. Uh, I got a killer estate sale haul a couple weeks ago. I got like five Derek Jeter rookie cards in great condition for they're a dollar each. Uh, they really, uh, the company, uh, was just trying to the state sale company was trying to clear things out really quickly So I'll be going into more of that and looking forward to getting to know some of you guys as I uh, rekindle My hobby of sports collecting. So let's break this thing open let's See This thing is Glued on here pretty good. We're gonna take the scissors to it Hopefully this this box isn't worth something one day. Wow, this thing is, I'm probably opening this in the worst possible way. But I just can't help it, I'm so excited. All right, there we go, we got inside the box. Yeah, I doubt these boxes will be worth anything one day. We don't know what this is, Mad Lids. Oh, these are like mini hats. So we'll put those to the side. So this first box, put this box to the side. Oh, we got one more hidden pack in here. All right, so let's see what kind of packs we got. Put these off to the side here. These other boxes. All right, let's see what we got. So we got 2015 Tops Football. I'm just getting back into this, so off my memory, uh, I'm, I'll, I'm sure I'll pick this uh, st this up really quick again, but I don't have all the rookie cards memorized, at least for football. I know my baseball and basketball a little bit better, but 2015, I'd have to go look uh, online to see who the rookies were. I'm sure when I see them, I probably will jog my memory. So we got 2015 tops. We got two 2017 Leafs. When I was collecting back in the early 90s, Leaf was uh, not the greatest set. So hopefully that's gotten 
a little bit better. We got upper deck. Oh, 91. That's that's going back pretty far. Um, oh, another thing I'll be doing, hopefully, is I bought a bunch of vintage boxes. And uh, my favorite year for football is 1989. There's so many good rookies in that. I uh, wish this was 89, but a couple of years off, 91. 89's got everybody. Barry Sanders, Deion Sanders, Troy Aikman, Thurman Thomas. There's like 10 or 15 good rookie cards. So uh, leave a comment below if you guys have certain boxes that you'd like to either watch me break or get in on a group break. Uh, hopefully we'll do that together in the future. Let's see, what do we have here? 2015, some more 2015 score. I remember score was not the greatest uh, type of a brand or product either. Uh, hopefully that's improved as well. Prestige, this looks a little higher end. Uh, Panini, looks like, uh, I've been out of the game for a while, but it looks like Panini bought uh, Don Russ, and I know this news is probably 10 years old, but uh, for any of you who are uh, my age, uh, about to turn 40 soon, <clears throat> You probably remember, <coughs> excuse me, a bunch of different brands. Uh, I think Panini bought a couple different brands, Don Russ and I believe a couple of other ones. And now I see that they have tons of different uh, sort of uh, offshoot brands under the Panini label. So I think this is, this is at least that's what I saw when I looked in Beckett recently. So Panini Prestige. So this looks like it might be a little higher end, eight, eight cards per pack. So uh, definitely correct me if I, uh, you know, misspeak on anything. Uh, for those of you who are just getting into collecting now or are getting back into it, uh, we'll kind of uh, familiarize ourselves together and hopefully have a lot of fun with it. So all right, what are we gonna open first? Let's save this. For last, let's get the Leafs out of the way and the scores, and then we'll do, I think these might be the best two, just my hypothesis. All right, so we'll, we'll do these scores first. All right, so let's do the score pack. Hopefully these aren't super difficult to open. I have to get to the scissors. Let's see, this side is usually easier. Snip it a little bit here. Whoops. A little snip on the edge. There we go. All right. So let's see what we got here. First pack. Juwan Thompson. I'm trying to remember what year this was. Oh yeah, this was 2015. So I, was, I think I was playing fantasy football in 2015, so this shouldn't be too hard. So Juwan Thompson, Malcolm Butler, I don't think those are anything great. Brandon Browner, Ryan Kerrigan, Lamar Miller, not a rookie card. Looks like there's one year of stats on there. Took him a while to start producing for fantasy. He's one of those players that I uh, kept drafting but gave up on after a while. Whoa, that was weird. The recording just randomly stopped. Must have been running low on space on the phone. And then, of course, I kept uh, opening packs and didn't realize that the recording stopped till I was done opening up the rest uh, of that box. So you saw the first part of the first box, which has eight packs. I tried to put things back to the way they were, um, go back to the first pack. And this is what we haven't looked at yet in the first pack. So I'll make sure that this stays recording for sure for the next uh, two boxes so uh, we don't have that snafu again. So let's see if I can zoom in on the player name at the bottom. So we had Lamar Miller, I was saying he's pretty good for fan he was pretty good for fantasy eventually. He took a long time to develop. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus better. Out of focus, there we go. So it took a while to develop, but Card's not probably not worth much. Kenny Stills, we got a Teddy Bridgewater franchise card. I'm not gonna put him aside for purposes of making the best team. I think I said earlier I didn't go back and watch the full uh, eight minutes or so that did get recorded initially, but we are going to make our best team 
out of these players that we find in these three boxes. And I think I'll just do skill position players and stick to that. Maybe I'll, I'm, I'm gonna do probably safeties in corners. I might do secondary uh, depending on how it goes here. Speaking of secondary, we got Landon Collins. Next here, it is a rookie card, Landon Collins. Remember looking at the, the draft order for that year the other day on Pro Football Reference and looking at the AV column on there, which is their measure of value. And it's fun to look down in the later drafts and see who got the steals. I think Landon Collins was bottom of first round, top of second round area. And his uh, value, according to Pro Football Reference, which does similar analytics to Pro Football Focus, was pretty good. I remember thinking, I wish the Cowboys drafted him. Cowboys fan here but not of the delusional variety. We have a uh, team leaders, Seattle Seahawks. So I'm gonna put that Landon Collins aside just because he might end up on our best, best team. So we got Seattle Seahawks team leaders, EJ Gibbs, Buck Allen, Julian Edelman. Nothing that great, the rest of that pack, Julian Edelman's. Probably good for fantasy. It took him a while to develop as well, but it seems like everybody develops on the Patriots. But as far as card value or value in my starters here that I'm going to put together, no need to put aside Julian Edelman. Matt Ryan, on the other hand, I will put him aside for purposes of making the best team here. Franchise card might be worth a few bucks. Very wish it was an autograph, of course, which all these were. I think that's what we look for nowadays, if I can tell right from the community. But like I said, been out of the game for a while, but it seems like everybody's just hunting for the autograph cards and the relic cards. So let's see if we get some of those out of here. We got a Barry Sanders, looks like some type of insert card, all time franchise. Definitely putting him aside. Barry Sanders is probably my second favorite player, Dion since this, apologies if I'm repeating some of the stuff I said the first eight minutes, but uh, like I said, didn't go back and watch. DeMarco Murray, Cowboys, a lot of little interesting tidbits that uh, these cards are touching on related to the Cowboys. Maybe that's just because I pay attention to those players more, but uh, one of the debates going on now is how important is a running back? Do they deserve the type of money that Ezekiel Elliott is asking for? And I don't remember anyone holding out two years with two years left on the contract, but my opinion is, the, and I think the analytics providers or publishers look at this the same way, that running back is one of the easiest positions to replace. So as far as distributing salary caps, usually not an optimal decision to put a lot down on a running back. On the other hand, if you do draft them in the fourth round, like you did with Zeke, then you would uh, presumably be ready to pay for them. But I'm personally hoping that as a Cowboys fan that they trade Zeke if he's looking to set the market because there's just not enough money to go around. You can't sign <clears throat> the triplets, you know, Cooper, Dak, and then the linebackers. Byron, jo Byron Jones is coming up next year and then the linebackers are gonna want money soon and those are hard to replace than Zeke so I say trade Zeke get a couple first round draft picks I'd take a first on a second I doubt you're gonna get two first what do you guys think uh do you think uh the Cowboys should trade Zeke you think they should pay him put a T in the comments below or P for pay him I'm interested to hear what you guys think I'll put a question there that you guys can respond to so DeMarco Murray uh oops wrong pile Mike I'm not gonna put him, I'm not gonna bother putting him aside. Alfred Morris, more conversational matter as a Cowboys fan. When they got Alfred Morris, all the Cowboys fans were like, no, anybody had better Alfred Morris. But I thought he did pretty well. I mean, he averaged, last time he was on the Cowboys, he averaged like 4.3 yards a carry or something like that. So, I mean, if he does okay, while well, Zeke's holding out, hopefully they'll realize that they don't. I could be wrong, I mean, 
but all the analytics say that they use Zeke in times when they really should be more aggressive, like first and second down. But Anyway, I digress here. So Alfred Morris, not going to put that one aside. I'm going to speed up a little bit here, but there's so many little tidbits for a Cowboys fan. Aaron Lynch, John Brown, Robert Quinn, <laughs> of course, more conversational matter. This is an interesting one. He just was suspended by the league for two games for he violated a performance enhancing policy and his agent released a statement on Twitter saying that it was cross-contamination for some pills he was trying to fill for his seizures and the level, the detectable level was like 0 .2002 something, you know, whatever the units are. And they're saying that the, the, in the policy, it violates, it comes up as a masking agent, like players used to use it to mask steroids. And apparently the level that you would need to t take it at to actually mask steroids, steroids, like a thousand times the level they detected. So it seems like more inconsistency from Roger Goodell. Do you guys, what do you guys think of Roger Goodell? Do you think uh, he's doing a good job with this uh, consistency and consistently enforcing policies? Curious, curious what you had to say. Put it in the comments down below. But uh, yeah, Robert Quinn, two games. I saw like Giants and Eagles fans on Twitter saying it was BS. So I don't know if they're saying it's BS. Then uh, it's nice that we're all sticking together on that one. So John Elway, Gridiron Heritage, some type of insert card. Trace Anderson, Jalen Strong, Devin Smith. I think that's the Devin Smith that's on the Cowboys roster right now. Just so many little, it's like they're, it's like they're prodding me with Cowboys drama. <laughs> it's inevitable with them, you know? It's always something. Stephen A. Smith is right about that. It is always something. They always find a way. Um, I think I glossed over this John Elway as, as it relates to, it might be worth a little bit book value wise. Uh, but I'm going to put it aside because it's John Elway. might need to use him on my squad. Kelvin Benjamin, Barry Sanders insert card. Retired early. Again, one of my favorite players, Jermaine Curse. Terrence Williams. Oh, yeah, the drama continues. Remember when he got caught driving drunk on his scooter and he fell over the handlebars and then tried to pretend like he wasn't drunk? Yeah, that was, that was funny. I was ready for them to cut him right there. Team leaders, put that one aside just because I like that one. That's an insert card of some sort. I don't have a Beckett next to me, but all these insert cards are probably, you know, somewhere between two and f most of them probably two to five dollars, or maybe one, some of them are ten. It was just a total guess without even having it next to me. But this, when, when I originally opened this up, it had that cardboard like divider card in between this, so. They're making this seem like it's a great card. So, I don't know. Hopefully it's worth something. Put that one aside. Oh, it's Anquan Bolden. Yeah, used to be, for fantasy, I remember Anquan and Larry Fitzgerald used to always get drafted close to each other. We're talking a few years back now. It's been a while since I've been also into the fantasy game. Fred Jackson, remember, used to be awesome for fantasy too. Very underrated, could get him in the later rounds. Derek Carr. Devaris Daniels. Nicole Pruitt. Brandon Schreff. Okay, so that was the first three score packs. So we're kind of caught up on the score. And then the next pack that I opened was Leaf. There were two packs of those. So... Let's show you the leaf. So we had Cooper Cup, turning out to be an awesome player. I think he was drafted low, I'm not 100% sure. Probably, I'm hoping I get better receivers than Cooper Cup, but we'll see, I guess. Dante Foreman, Chris Goodwin, James Quick, 
Ryan Ramsack, if I was doing an offensive line, I might think about putting him in there. I don't know how great he did, actually. I'm not keeping up on the offensive line stats of other non-Cowboys teams. Deshaun Watson might might need him. Let's put him aside. And that's a nice rookie card, I guess, too. I think all of those are rookie cards because it's from the Leaf draft set. Let's see. So that was Leaf. Okay, and then I had a pack of tops. So on the tops, we got Melvin Gordon. Might need to use him for a running back. Rashad Jennings. Dominique Brown. Vince Mayo. Niall Davis. Nick Mangold. Keenan Allen. Steve Smith Sr. I'm going to put Steve Smith Sr. aside. Might use him for a wide receiver. And then, what do we get after that? After that, we got Upper Deck. One pack of Upper Deck. So we got Dennis Bird, Rod Woodson, Barry Sanders. Putting both of them aside for the... Rod Woodson for the team, Barry Sanders for both reasons. A tackle, I don't know. Wide receiver, I don't know. Don't remember... Sammy Smith or Johnny Holland, Ryan Noble, this kicker, or sorry, that's a wide receiver, Perry Kemp, James Francis, Sterling Sharp, definitely remember Sterling Sharp, putting him aside, probably know his brother, Shannon Sharp, but from Skip and Shannon, he's quite the talker, pretty good at his job, if I may say so myself, but Sterling Sharp was a beast for a couple years with Bears, with, uh, Excuse me, Brett Favre. All right, and then the last one was this uh, 2013 Prestige. So we had Kendall Wright. Hopefully I don't have to use him for a wide receiver. Brent Selleck, I'll put him aside. I need a tight end. Cameron Wake. We got Andre Ellington. I'm going to put that aside. This is a nice rookie card. Jonathan Banks, Josh Cribbs, Patrick Peterson, and Matt Stafford. So, let's see. I don't remember getting three wide receivers, so I might have to go back into the stash for Josh Cribbs, but definitely putting aside Patrick Peterson. And I think I, would, I had Elway, right? So, I don't know. Matthew Stafford, that's a pretty good conversation right there. I mean, he's... He's a heck of a quarterback. I, I can't say I would take him over John Elway, but I'm putting it aside because it's a nice card. Okay, so we're through through the first box. Let's go into the second box. So that kind of treasures we can find. These boxes, they definitely don't make them easy to open. Oh, that's probably the easier end to open it from. Of course. fun part, seeing the box open. I don't want to do that off camera. Some packs in there. Alright, let's see what we got. Hopefully it's not the same exact thing. Looks like it might be. I they had some variation. Alright, it, like it looks like it might be a little bit different. Put the little lids things aside. Let's see what we got. So we got another Leaf 2015 Oh Pro Set. Man, that brings back some old memories and feelings. 2017. It's amazing how certain things can bring back memories, isn't it? So I remember I, whenever I, I have, my, I always keep my baseball glove. I have it in the closet, and when if you just smell it, you all the memories. I'm flooding back in just this this yellow color and the feel of the packaging. I remember buying a couple bo boxes of these. I think it was series two. Trying to find the Payne Stewart and uh, Santa Claus card, and there's like a crap ton of errors in this set. 
like hundreds of errors. There's one of a guy who they, they say has a bloody face because his face is like tinted red a little bit. I forget the guy's name, but it goes for like 30 bucks or something on eBay. It's not, it doesn't sell that much. Like I saw one sale within the past, within the past like year or something. But man, it's crazy how you can just bring back feelings. Just the feel and the, or memories and, and feelings, of the color and the texture of that. Anyway, 2015, not to go down memory lane with y'all too far, end up in a cul-de-sac. 2015, well, we can't come back. 2015, uh, score three times and uh, another prestige. Let's see, I didn't show you that one. Another prestige, 2013, leaf 2018 draft. So that's similar to this leaf, but just different year. And then just a regular Donruss 2016. So let's set the order for these. So let's put the prestige last. We'll do the score first and then the pro set. And then we'll do the leaf and then the Donruss. All right, so let's see if we can open this. without the help of scissors. So we can open this without the help of scissors. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to work on my pack opening game. It's kinda sad, right? It's like, you haven't played basketball in a while and your jump shot's all off. My pack, my pack tear's all off. All right, we finally got that one open. Camera work a little bit here. Okay, Devin McCordy. I think we have enough. I think we had safeties, but I don't know if we have cornerbacks. So I'm gonna put him aside to be a possible cornerback. Le'Veon Bell. I'm gonna need a running back. Plus, what is this? 2015. That's gotta be. That's gotta be close to his rookie year, right? When was his rookie year? AFC. Rushing leader, what does it say? 2014, second running back to have three consecutive games with more than 200 yards. I think this is, this is in his rookie card, but I don't remember him being drafted that much, that many years before this, so. Anyway, putting that one aside, Eric Ebron. My hands have been trying to find a good tight end for a while. Paul Kruger, let's see if I can focus on the name here at the bottom. Paul Kruger, Delaney Walker. We have a tight end, right? We have Brent Selick, Adam Vinatieri. I don't. I don't think we're gonna field the kicker for this, but it's the greatest, the great outdoors insert card. So I'll put it aside. We got a uh, team leaders for the Broncos. Super hard to read the names because they're all in the same color. But Peyton Manning. E.J. Anderson, Von Miller, and one other guy. It's hard to read the name on there. You got Brett Hundley. I don't remember him ever developing. Andrews Pete, Danny Shelton. We got a team leader card. Andrew Luck, Trent Richardson never developed into much. T.Y. Hilton was awesome. Jonathan Newsom, don't know who that is. Might probably an offensive lineman. Bishop Shanky, don't remember him ever developing, putting him aside. Okay, so that was the first pack of the second box. Let's see if we can continue our sans scissoring, sans scissors pack opening streak. I'm gonna be a little baby and go with the scissors. So we have another Juwan Thompson. We have Teddy Bridgewater. Tori Smith. What is this? Brian Cushing. We're not fielding linebackers. Drew Stanton. There's a nice Doug Flutie behind that. Brendan Oliver. 
Doug Flutie, put the Doug Flutie aside because it's an insert. Philip Dorsett, Devontae Parker. Who's this? Brian Bennett, rookie card. Don't remember him. It's like TJ Watt, JJ Watt, I mean. That's a nice card. Franchise, JJ Watt. Probably worth a couple bucks. Derek Brooks. If we needed defense, I would definitely field Derek Brooks. I believe he's a linebacker, right? Okay. That was the second pack. We're building a nice team. I know we got Barry Sanders and John Elway, so. I mean, that's a nice duo. I don't know who's going to tackle Barry Sanders. So, I encourage you guys to try this and let's see what teams you guys come up with. I think I've, this, there's a bunch of videos out there doing the Fairfield Challenge. Riley Cooper. Can't remember if we need more wide receivers or not. Des Bryant. Honestly, even as a Cowboys fan, not one of my favorite receivers. He was just kind of, I mean, he was awesome. Don't get me wrong, but kind of had one thing that he did really, really well. Just go up and get it. Jump ball type stuff, but got to put him aside. Elvis Doomerville. Devontae David. Trent Richardson. Denarius Moore. Looks like a placeholder for something. Ooh, there you go. Jerry Rice. Probably my third favorite player of all time. Dion, Barry Sanders, Jerry Rice, that's an insert card. Gonna have to sleeve that one up before we field our team. Ronald Darby, Trey McBride. What does this say? Bernard Drake McKinney, rookie card. Derek Carr, not even gonna bother putting that aside. Team leaders. And then one of the contest cards. Okay, so that's all the score. Let's get into the pro set. Let's see if we can pull a Santa Claus or an Emmett Smith rookie card. We want the Emmett Smith rookie card. We want the Santa Claus. We want the Payne Stewart. We want some weird era cards. Randall Cunningham. Contest card. Mark Rippin. Eric McKillen. Jerry Ball, Mark Lee. These are bringing back serious memories. Max Montana, Mel Gray, Ray Agnew. His brother was my fifth grade teacher. Shout out Mr. Agnew if you see this. Super Pro. That's actually kind of a tough one to get, I think, odds wise. Oh, so is Bart Starr, I think, right? Maybe not Bart Starr as much as Superhero. I don't ever. I don't remember getting Superhero from a box when I was a kid. And I remember looking for both of these, but I mean, you can get these on eBay for a couple bucks, but still, back then, I think that would have been pretty dope, if memory serves me correctly, so. The real question is, am I allowed to put Superhero on the team that I field? Hmm, it's getting into the gray area of these rules, so let me know down below. Should I be allowed to field superhero for my team? Type Y for yes, N for no. A little question down there. Bart Starr. I'm not too familiar with his stats, but I don't think he's gonna. I don't think I don't think he'll trump John Elway on my team. But I might have to I might have to go keep the stats real quick. Just check the stats. All right. Let's see. What do we got the. 2018 Leaf Draft. Oh, Baker Mayfield. Oh, uh, yeah. That's one of my... Oh, I, sh I should show you that in a little closer detail. Baker Mayfield, one of my favorite players these days. He's like my new Brett Favre. Brett Favre is one of my favorite players. Antonio Callaway, Josh Adams, Nick Chubb, Josh Rosen. I'm not going to put any of those aside. Going, to the, going into the 2017 Leaf now. figure out what side is easier to open here.
All right. Oh, I thought that was a signature right there real, real quick. Cooper Rush, Cowboys backup quarterback, Cam Robinson, Christian McCaffrey. I'm going to put him aside. That's a Christian McCaffrey rookie card. That's a pretty good one. At least for the future. Maybe not right now, but... McCaffrey's just got all kinds of football players. They're just like, the Christmas tree is just like littered with football players. Or I should say when they gather around the Christmas tree. Dan Bailey randomly got cut last year. That was a big surprise. Not feeling the kicker, so I don't care too much about Dan Bailey. I don't know, are there that many kicker cards out there that are worth it that much not that even besides fielding them for my team let me know in the comments curious what's the what's the uh most valuable kicker card <laughs> who would want to buy it all right i'm curious to know seriously alex ogletree elvis doomerville melvin gordon i'll put him aside joe thomas those fielding offensive linemen he's He's a great one. Kevin Green. Put him aside. That's an insert card. Hall of Fame. It's not numbered or anything. Paxton Lynch, rated rookie. Cowboys. Jerry Jones was trying so hard to get him in the draft. Good thing he didn't and end up with Dak Prescott because Dak Prescott's a million times better than Paxton Lynch. Look at that photo, too. That is... Pretty cheesy photo, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> that is funny. Paxton. All right. So this last pack is 2013 Prestige. Let's see if we can. We might have to use this. Oh, there we go. I thought we were gonna have to break out the scissors on this guy. All right, Bryce Brown, Christian Ponder, Malcolm Floyd. What is this? Marcus Wheaton, NFL draft picks. That's a cool card. I remember drafting him in fantasy, thinking he was gonna blow up. He never fully developed, but a lot, a lot of Steelers receivers just kind of come out of nowhere. This is a thick card of some sort. This is an insert card. Some type of relic card. Let's see if we can reveal it for you. Prestigious picks. No, I don't, this doesn't. That does not look familiar. Uh, what player is this? Who is it? Oh, Kenny Stills. Relic card. That's pretty sweet. Wish it was a better player. Kenny Stills. That's a thick card. Okay, relic card, and these, oh, I had these aside earlier, right? Josh Kurd, Patrick Peterson, Matt Stafford. Oh, here's the rest of that pack. So we got Bryce Brown. No, we saw these. I think it was just this last card here. Maybe it was Malcolm Floyd. Can't remember if that was from earlier. I think there was one card behind that. So that was the last pack of the second box. Let's go into the second box now. Oh yeah, this was the easier way to get to it. So on to the third box. Got some pretty nice cards so far, actually. I mean, for, if you think about it, for for 13 bucks, I mean, I think it's worth it. I think it's a lot of fun, these boxes. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, what am I doing? I literally just pulled myself. Easier to open for myself. All right, here we go. Actually, it takes a little bit of skill for sure to 
get the cards in the view of the camera and narrate along. All right, so we got another Don Russ 91 upper deck, more of that Fleer 2017, more of the score 2015, and another Prestige. So we'll do it in a similar order. These here. All right, so we'll go with the score first. See what we can get out of here. Are there any autograph cards that you can get in here? Let's see. I don't know. That prints are really small. I don't even know if you can get autograph cards. We know you can get relics in one of those packs. Got that Kenny Stills jersey card. All right. So. Corliss, what is this, flip this around, who is this, Matt Asiata, probably Polynesian player, Dan Heron, Mike Tolbert, Justin Tuck, Calvin Johnson. There you go. Looks like some kind of parallel or insert card. Or like a parallel, a camo parallel or something. It's a really nice card. Roger Staubach, putting him aside. Eric Kendricks, Daniel Hunter, Eric Rao. Ooh, we got Aaron Rodgers. He's going to have to... John, we'll, we'll get to Aaron Rodgers in a second. Trey Mason, sophomore selections. Don't recognize him. But Aaron Rodgers, franchise card. It's probably worth a couple bucks and... Hate to say it, but John Elway. You're coming out of the game, bro. Aaron Rodgers is... He's the man. All right, so I think Aaron Rodgers is their new starting quarterback. John Elway is a backup. All right, let's see. We're getting this pack. We'll help back him. Not a rookie card, I guess. Yeah, it's got one year of stats, but gonna have to squeeze him into the lineup somehow. Cam Chancellor. Travis Kelsey, I might actually pick him over Brent Selleck. CJ Spiller, Jericho Cotchery. Who's this? James Jones, team leaders card, Jaguars. Clive Waterford, Jalen Collins. Shane Ray, Terrence West, Terrence West, Earl Campbell. Don't know too much about older stats, but I'm pretty sure Earl Campbell is pretty good. Next pack. More 2015 score. Let's see, where could we use an upgrade? We have Aaron Rodgers. We have Barry Sanders, we have Odell. Who else do we have at wide receiver? Odell, hit somebody else good. We have Steve Smith, Calvin Johnson. Uh, man, I don't know where, where could we use. We got Brent Selleck at tight end. We're gonna have to go to secondary. We had Landon Collins, Rod Woodson. We had Devin McCourty at cornerback. So I don't even know where we could really upgrade. I guess we could upgrade we might have to like move on to the other positions because I'm not sure it's even possible to upgrade those. Matt Forte, maybe we'll have a backup running back. Actually, we got a couple running backs that are no joke. Ryan Mallett, Michigan, went to Michigan, never 
really fully materialized, was on the Patriots for a little while. Thought he was going to be the next Tom Brady for a minute. I think he was on the Patriots, right? Or he wanted him to be on the Patriots. Golden Tate. AJ Green. Ooh, we got receivers. Like the wazoo. Andre Ellington. Another divider card, so something good here, maybe. Don't tell me that's a divider card for a score leaders or team leaders. I guess this is gold. So it's like a parallel. Denard Robinson from Michigan. Alan Hearns just got cut by the Cowboys. So not a great use of a gold label. Wish they deployed that gold label on something else. Then we got another team leaders. Lions. Oh, Walter Payton. He can't, he's not going to oust Barry Sanders though, but that's pretty close in my opinion. So the next pack, 2017 Leaf. John Legend, no. Jordan Legit, Mitch Trebinsky, rookie card, putting that aside. Dalvin Cook, Mike Williams, Jamal Williams. Same pack. 17 Leaf. James Connor. Almost got the Steelers to the Super Bowl despite Le'Veon Bell's held out. Juju Smith Schuster. And him aside. Sean Kaiser. Josh Reynolds. I don't remember Juju Smith Schuster in college. Let me go to. I only went to a big time school. Brandon Marshall, used to love him in fantasy. Tom Brady, ooh, oh man. We might have just upgraded the quarterback. I gotta put Tom, Tom Brady's my quarterback all day long. He went to Michigan, Amari Cooper. Got a nice Earl Campbell here. It's like some type of throwback card. It's not specially numbered though. Some nice cards in here for sure. Alan Hearns, Delaney Walker, Jordan Reed, Press Proof, Wendell Smallhood, rated rookie. Going into the 91 upper deck now. He looks right. Ray Agnew again. Chris Zorich, Billy, R man, upper deck. Put your cards in the right order. I always remember that. I, I always remember that as a kid. Billy Ray Smith is like, seemed to be the only brand that couldn't. Like, how does that even happen on the machine? Seems like you have to go out of your way to get them in that order. Tony Page, Don Griffin. Not great cards from upper deck. I don't think that was, I definitely ordered the packs. If I was trying to order the packs from from worst to best, top to bottom, I definitely did that. I would do that in a whole different order now, now that I see the cards. That was just my guess, being out of the game for a long time before opening them. I guess that's how you learn, right? 2013 Prestige. This pack feels that might be a trick. they have loose packs. I'm sure people do that. But this, I remember the, the other prestige pack was not nearly this thick. So I bet you there's some type of a relic card in here. Yep, right there in the middle. Man, I, I can't believe that. Like you can tell just from feeling it. So you know people are going through those boxes right when they come out at the retail store stores. 
Deshaun Jackson used to tear it up for fantasy in his first couple of years. Mike Wallace. I don't think I'm going to put those aside. We got receivers, and I don't think those cards are anything that amazing. We got Ndamukong Sue. Wow, we might have to go on to defense. We'll do we'll do two little segments because we got a full. I know we. I was kind of worried we weren't even going to be able to field a full a full offense, so I went down to skill players, and then I was saying plus secondary, but we field the we got a killer offense and a killer secondary, so might as well do the rest of the defense. Uh, well, maybe we'll do linebackers, or we'll we'll see what happens. Because I think if I do defensive line, then I have to do offensive lines. And I don't really want to do offensive line because I don't know too much about that. But I'm still putting him down again. Aside. Oh, I just like him. Some type of insert card, extra points. Too bad it's EJ Manuel, rookie card. All right, what do we have here? Oh, that's what the separator was for? Lame. All right, we got... These are separators, right? This is not some type of card in and of itself. Uh, Bjorn Werner, DeMarco Murray. I'm not even putting DeMarco Murray aside, even though I'm a Cowboys fan. Is that weird? That's it, right? Yeah, that's all three boxes. So I'm going to sleeve some of these cards that I really like a, a lot and might be worth something up, like the that die-cut one and... Barry Sanders, a few other things, and I'll be right back. I've got the starting lineups picked out. Offense was pretty straightforward. Defense was another story, and there's some debate to be had there. So offensively, I had Tom Brady. I went to Michigan. Tom Brady is starting. No questions asked. And Aaron Rodgers will be his backup. So I'll put Aaron Rodgers kind of behind there like that. Barry Sanders is our running back. Barry Sanders is our running back. For wide receiver, we're going to have Jerry Rice. Can't sit him on the bench. And then we got a choice. We got Calvin Johnson. We've got Calvin Johnson. We've got Odell Beckham. He's... Amazing, but hasn't had a long career yet. Calvin Johnson didn't have a really long career either. Then we got AJ Green and Travis Kelsey was going to be our tight end. So we'll put Travis over here. And so receiver, this is a tough one. Calvin, Odell, AJ Green. I'm going to have to go with Megatron, number two, even though he didn't have a super long career. At least we know the career he had and oh between Odell and AJ Green that's a tough one I'm gonna put in Odell just because he doesn't get hurt or hasn't gotten hurt even though he hasn't been in the league as much as AJ Green he did get hurt but AJ Green's had the injury bug lately so that's our skill positions Tom Brady Barry Sanders Travis Kelsey and then our three receivers Odell Megatron, and Jerry Rice. So that was pretty straightforward. We go on to defense. It's a little different story. So we're gonna do, for defense, we're just doing secondary. We're gonna do a nickel defense on secondary. So five people in the secondary. The only sure thing, I think, is Rod Woodson. He's either in the Hall of Fame right now, or if he's not, he's going to be really soon. So we've got Rod Woodson at safety. I don't think it really matters what free safety or strong safety. And then we got a choice for safety. We got, I, I passed over. I didn't see Cam Chancellor when we were going through the packs. So Cam Chancellor and Landon Collins. What do you guys think? Who would you start? Cam Chancellor or Landon Collins? If for Cam... Go ahead and respond to the question with a K down in the comments below. Landon Collins, type L. That's a tough one. I'm going to go with Cam Chancellor. Because we kind of know what his career was. But Landon Collins is a beast too. I'm going to go with Cam Chancellor. Then we got some choices. 
at the cornerback position as well. The only sure, sure thing for me is Patrick Peterson. He's, other than Deion Sanders, probably my favorite cornerback of all time. And then we have choices. We have Devin McCourty. We have some other players that I pulled from the pro set that I didn't initially recognize their names, but I flipped them over and looked at the stats, and they're, they have some pretty impressive stats. Kevin Ross, Mark Lee. We'll come back to those two. I meant to look up Jaron Collins. It kind of sounded familiar. I don't know too much about this. I'm going to put this off to the side, eliminate him. And then we have Malcolm Butler. So I, I don't think we had a lot of newer players that were great for cornerback. I don't know Malcolm Butler too well. I just know that the Patriots always have good players. So I'm going to probably pick one of these old timers over Malcolm Butler, although they do have Devin McCourty. We do have Devin McCourty, so might keep him in the lineup there. So let's look at these guys. So this guy, Mark Lee, had played in the league for, what, eight years? Let's see, nine years? Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 years, yeah, 10 years. 80 to 89 plus one, that's 10. And had a pretty good career. Look at that year, 986. He had nine interceptions. Nine is a lot. He also had 60 tackles that year. And also had a fumble recovery. Veteran cornerback started 10 games for the Packers. He only, he only started 10 games. Oh yeah, this is in, the, in 90, right? His nine interceptions at 86, tied for second best in club history, led defense in passing, broke up, uh, pass, passes broken up each year from 81 and that had NFL's the longest punt return. Oh, also had a punt return for a touchdown in 81. So, Mark Lee, looks like a solid player. And then we have this Kevin Ross who didn't have as long of a career. He did have six interceptions in one year. And in 85, he had 111 tackles. So he's a better tackler, seems like, probably better against the run than uh, Mark Lee, I'm guessing. So what do you guys think? Kevin Ross or Mark Lee as my second cornerback? I might need both of them, right? Unless I think Malcolm Butler. So, we won't make that an official question, since I'm probably going to, I don't know too much about Malcolm Butler, so let me know what you guys think. You know what? Let me know what you guys think instead. Who was a better cornerback, Kevin Ross or Mark Lee? Put Kevin down in the comments below, or M. Put K for Kevin and M for Mark. It's kind of a cryptic question, but we'll, we'll see how, how many of you guys like me, or like me, getting into their 40s, used to be a collector in the early 90s and getting back into it. I'm really interested to see how many of us are out there and wh what you guys are up to. So I'm going to go Kevin Ross and Mark Lee's to complete my nickel defense. We have Patrick Peterson, Devin McCourty, Mark Lee, Kevin Ross. Actually, that's too many, too many, right? Oh yeah, my fault. We do have to pick between Kevin Ross and Mark Lee. So I'm gonna pick Mark Lee because we need three corners and two safeties, right? Wasn't paying attention to that for a sec. So I'm gonna pick Mark Lee. So good thing we made that an official question. What would you want, Kevin? Kevin Ross or Mark Lee, Devin McCourty, Patrick Peterson, those are my corners. I guess I could have used an upgrade probably if I had, you know, pulled a Deion Sanders or, um, you know, Richard Sherman, something like that, I would have played them over these guys. Um, not sure I could upgrade Rod Woodson. I probably could up, upgrade Cam Chancellor. So defense, not as good as offense. Let me know what you guys thought about my team. Do you think I had a stronger offense or a stronger defense? Put O for offense, D for defense down in the comments. I think offense was a little bit stronger. If you guys like this video, 
please like, comment, subscribe if you want to check out more of these videos. Be notified as soon as they come out. I'm going to do all kinds of different videos, breaking vintage boxes. We'll do some group breaks together once you guys let me know which boxes you're most interested in. Make sure to have some of those on hand. We're going to be doing some giveaways. I'm going to do another video soon here showing you what I got from an estate sale. Got a killer estate sale jackpot. Like I think we got five J Jeter rookies, three or four A-Rod rookies. Those were all a dollar. And a bunch of other good stuff. Got an A-Rod signed baseball for five bucks. So I'll plan on doing that state sale haul next. So make sure you subscribe, smash that subscribe button right there below so you get notified when that next video comes out. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.